In this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the different areas that you wanna utilize and think about to really grow your business and your management abilities. This is based off of 20 years of management experience that I have had working in the corporate world and training leaders and managers just like you to improve their management process. So in the last three videos, we spent some time kind of helping you, un, you know, tap into your unfiltered greatness, your what, what do we do best, what are our strengths, weaknesses, our purpose. And we also talked about, you know, how do we confront people in a healthy way? How do we really engage in that process in a way that not only is satisfying to the person who's being confronted, but also helps the leader feel good about the approach that they're taking. Now that we've caught up on that, I wanna take you through the entire Management Skills Magnifier Blueprint and what we do and what are the key areas that we look for to really improve a management process, not only in the area of management as a whole, but also in growth and simplification of that manager's life as well. So previously I told you the, the place to start in great management is really in who you are and how you're showing up for others. And I, I made this mistake early on in my management career. I remember my boss talking to me and he said, Brandon, why do you think your results are not where they need to be? And I did the probably the least leadership type of a thing that I could have done in that situation. And I said, well, boss, my team sucks. If I had better players, we would have better results. Now, my boss said, you know, since you used a team analogy in this way, he said, hey, what do you think uh, sports teams do when their team's not playing well? I saw the writing on the wall there and I was like, well, they fire the coach. He said, so yes, that's correct. So let's look at you as cause in the matter in this situation. And it really caused me to reflect on what was really missing in my leadership. And I think it's really easy, like I did, to have a have, do, be mentality. And what I mean by that is, it's easy to say, look, if I had better players, we would do more productive things, and then I would be a better manager, right? That have, do, be process. And you can think of a lot of different things that you've probably done in your life where you've had that have, do, be mentality. But as a leader, we want to have a be, do, have mentality. I need to be a powerful leader. I need to be an empowering leader. I need to be an accountable leader if I'm going to do the things that that kind of a leader does. And then when we do those things, we're going to have the things that we need to have. But if we forget the being and we place the doing before the being, we're going to fall short in our efforts because it's always going to be about someone else. It's always going to be about that next tool. And we run into that. We run into managers and leaders on a consistent basis who say, Brandon, I just need a couple of more tools in my management toolbox. And if I had those, I would manage and lead my teams in a powerful way. What we've known over the years, and we've tried it, we've tried it all, all sorts of different ways, is those things fall short. They don't create a lasting impact on their management ability. So as you understand who you are, there's five key things that this influences in a really powerful way. And I wanna share those with you today. Consistency. Early on in my career, not consistent. In fact, if we're being honest, there's so many things that we have to do as leaders and managers, it's hard to be consistent. Even today, I'm not as consistent with certain things as I would like to be. And I'll be completely honest with you about that. The process of understanding myself better though is to recognize when I put too many things in my way that keep me from being consistent. So when I know more about who I am as a manager and who I am as a leader, I know what are the best things for me to do. I know how to say no better. I know how to recognize when I'm trying to overperform for success because I'm in scarcity or I'm in fear. And those kinds of things trip me up from being consistent. But here's the thing as a manager that you have to understand, consistency is your currency. If you are inconsistent, you do not have credibility with your team and you can't influence your team in a powerful way. So consistency is so important. Communication, I talked about this in the last video around confrontation, but communication is, is way beyond confrontation. It's about planning, it's about organizing, it's about 
letting people know that you care about them. It's about creating connection with people that you work with and using our words are great ways to do this. And finding your communication style is so important. And when you know who you are, you start to own your communication authentically and you stop trying to communicate like someone else. And when you do this, your team hears you and they respond to you in a powerful way. Self-awareness. This ties all of these things together. The more that I use these tools, the more self-aware that I become. And the more self-aware that I am, the more I see where I influence and impact my team in a good way and also in a not so good way. Self-awareness is so critical. It was the one thing that I lacked above all things in my early management career. Now, here's the cool thing about self-awareness. It's an ongoing process, right? Every time I peel a layer of the onion, there's another layer there for me to examine and look at and discover what that's about. And so this is an ongoing process for us as managers. And for some of us, we're afraid of doing the self-awareness piece because we're afraid that it's gonna tell us that we're not good enough, but that's not the case. You are good enough. It's about finding the way that you do it in a powerful way and in an effective way instead of worrying about what you're not which can really happen in, self, in this self-awareness journey and really hold you back as a manager. Accountability. Look, as a manager, accountability is important. And there's a place that good accountability starts and we need to know where that is. And so this is something that we talk about and we discuss in the course is just really where great accountability starts and how to bring accountability to your team in an effective way. And so this is one of the building blocks that we have of managing teams well in a way that creates growth and creates freedom for us. And the last thing is motivational systems. I don't know how many times me or one of my coaches hears this from a leader or a manager. How do I motivate my team? And we get really caught up into extrinsic motivators, right? Money, time off, perks, those kinds of things. And there's nothing wrong with that. All those things are great but sometimes those motivational systems fall short. So we really dig into this blueprint process really helps us understand where, um, where our best motivational systems are, how we best motivate our team so that we can do that in a way that really creates lasting impact and uh, fulfillment for your team at the same time. So how do we do these things well? As we go through this management skills magnifier process, it starts with purpose. And part of purpose is understanding our strengths, right? What are we good at? What do we bring to the table? What, what are the things that we just really do well that we can really hold on to and, and, and discard the things that we don't do so well? And that's the other part of this is weaknesses. What are the things that I'm not really good at that I really need to get other help in my organization to really help me be more complete as a manager by delegating and having other people that support me in my management efforts. Understanding where you get consistent superior results. So we can know strengths or weaknesses, but what I really wanna understand is how do those things show up in my day-to-day -day work? And so one of the best ways that we can see where we create great impact is by looking at where do we get consistent superior results? Where do we just do things better than other people do? The same is true for our lack of results. So where do we get consistent failure or results that, that fall short? Where are those areas that we consistently do that? Recognize that and write that down. And that takes a level of self-awareness that sometimes we don't have as managers because we get so busy working in our day-to-day -day that we don't look at it and recognize what's happening. Communication style is another piece. How do you communicate? One of the things I've noticed about myself is I can be a very direct communicator. And early on in my career, my direct communication typically led to people crying. And those were men and women, and sometimes more men than women in these situations. And so I've had to learn over the years that look, there's a way to be direct, and I think people appreciate that, but there's a way to do it that softens maybe the impact that you're gonna have on other people. And so going through this process of self-discovery helps you to understand like, what is my communication style? What is the way that I prefer to communicate? What are the best ways for me to communicate? And just recognize, like for me, I'm an extrovert. I think out loud, I talk out loud. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not so good. If you're an introvert, hey, 
You may have a different way of communicating. Don't worry about how I communicate if it doesn't align with who you are. So that's important to keep in mind when, you, when it comes to communication styles. Your personality is another one. I like to have fun, I like to compete, I like to make games out of things. I love to do that, but other people have like a more buttoned up, professional kind of personality, right? Where they're more like, you know, A plus B equals C, you know, those engineer types, those people that are just really a lot more structured. And so what is your style? What is the way that, that you wanna lead? And, and going through this process really helps you to uncover what is your leadership style? What do you bring to the table as a leader? This was something that was so hard for me early on in my career. I just constantly compared myself to other people. And then I thought, well, how come I'm not so good at doing this like this guy? Or, you know, this woman's so good at this. You know, I'm not really that good at that. And I really had to find my own leadership style and own it. And when I did that, I was able to manage people in a really powerful way. And the last thing that we need to understand and know in this is just the essentials uh, that we want to bring to build culture. What are the things that you want to bring to the table in your culture that's important? And this is about owning the environment, really understanding what kind of an environment we want to work in. And I remember I had a boss years ago who used to say, I don't want to come into your office and feel flam. And I said, what is flam? And he said, flam is feels like a morgue. And I thought, okay. He's like, I don't want to walk into your office and feel like I'm in a morgue where it's cold, it's, it's antiseptic, it's just everyone's dead, basically, in your organization. And I always thought about that. I always thought, okay, we don't want to have flam in our office. Because we worked in sales, we wanted to be upbeat. We wanted to be, uh, you know, kind of on, a, on the edge of our seat, really engaging in powerful conversations with other people. And when people didn't have high energy, it was really hard for them to really present themselves well on the phone to clients. And so I really thought about that energy. Now for every different industry and, and office and organization, that's gonna look different. But I bet you if you're like me, you never thought about like, well, what's the environment that I'm trying to create? What's my role in that? And how do I use management to help to shape and mold the kind of environment that I want? And what we talk about a lot is, you can have a culture by accident, or you can have a culture by design, but one of those two things is gonna happen. Either you're gonna be a part of that cultural process and conversation, or you're not, but a culture is going to be created no matter what. So those are some things to think about as we go through the building blocks and we talk about the Management Skills Magnifier Blueprint. These are some of the things that we bring to the table in that conversation for you. So once you have all these things that we talked about put together, this helps you to develop a leadership and management philosophy that really serves as the blueprint for how you lead and manage teams in a powerful way. Now, I don't wanna bombard you with too many things about the course. I mean, this is just, again, just a little taste of what we go through in the Masters of Management course, but this kind of gives you an idea of what awaits you um, in our course that we have coming up here. So. Uh, here's what I want you guys to do. You guys know, click on the link below. If you want to be part of the early bird access, we would love to give you first chance to engage in the course and get the course. It's going to be on a limited basis. First come, first serve. We want to make sure you don't miss out. So on our next video, you don't want to miss this because you've heard me talk about the course and content with the course. And you're like, of course, Brandon's going to say it's great and all this other stuff because he created it and he put it together. I get it. So I'm gonna bring in a case study and I'm, you're gonna hear from an actual client of ours who's utilized the tools that we talk about and the processes that we talk about in this particular course to drastically improve his growth and his freedom as a leader and a manager of his team. So I'm really excited for you guys to hear his story. It's gonna be fantastic. So stay tuned and don't miss the next video.